These are the five whiskies I am hunting right now that I really, really want to try. I've heard fantastic things about these whiskies. So I'm Phil and I'm gonna fill you in about my top five hunted whiskies. So the first whiskey I'm actually hunting right now is from a new distillery and it's just really because of time. I haven't picked this up yet. I think it's only just arrived in the country. What's really interesting about this new distillery is that it seems to have got a lot more cut through in terms of marketing, like people talking about it, than probably any other new recent distillery that I've seen. So what is the whiskey? Well, it's from the Isle of Harris, and the whiskey I'm talking about is the Herrick, it was their first release. It's got great stats, 46%, unsure filtered, natural color. But what's really interesting, and I think part of the reason it's got a bit of hype, is they've released this whiskey when it's a little bit older than most new releases. So if you take a whiskey, say, like the Lockley, like this came out kind of young. I think it was like three years and it does taste young, but you can see the spirit behind it is actually really good. Whereas Isle of Harris are releasing something a little bit older and that's expensive to do. Cause if you're going another two years without selling a single bottle, like you need some good capital to do that. But the positive is if you release your very first whiskey and people are willing to give you a shot and it's actually quite good and it's not too spirity, it gives you much more longevity if people are going to rebuy your bottle later. Because I do know a lot of people, they buy one bottle from a distillery and if they don't like it, they'll never buy a bottle from that distillery again. Some of the criticisms that I've heard though actually is that the whiskey is a little bit too expensive for a first release. Now I, I kind of get that, but at the same time on Whiskey Lock's review when he was talking about it, he wrote a comment where he was saying, look at the end of the day, he'd much rather spend 65 pounds on a five-year-old Herrick than 150 pounds on some tequila finished Lagavulin or a 265 pounds on like a non-age statement, 40% Dalmore. And I think that's pretty true. I'm in the same boat. And what's really interesting about the headache is that it sounds like the casks are really good. It lets the spirit speak. It's not a sherry bomb. It's not a smoke bomb. It, it, it's a very like spirit forward whiskey, which is really cool. I'm really keen to try it. It's on the buy list and I am hunting that whiskey. So this next whiskey is the whiskey I have been hunting the longest out of any whiskeys on this list. I've just heard fantastic things. In fact, it really blew up like two years ago now. Everyone on Whiskey Tube was going on about this whiskey. Jeff Whiskey recently uh, named this his most highly rated whiskey he's ever reviewed on his channel. They do a bunch of different releases, a sherry cask release, a bourbon release, and I think this year they did a port release. So I think it does come out in batches. So what is that whiskey? It is the Kilcarran 8. Specifically, I'm more wanting to get the sherry cask one, but I mean, if I can get hold of the bourbon cask or the port cask, great. It's got everything going for it. Campbelltown notes, it's cask strength. Yeah, it just seems to be one that has just hit off with so many whiskey enthusiasts. I mean, the actual distillery is called Glen Guile. I don't actually know why they don't just call the distillery Kilcarran because, I mean, there's enough Glens and it gets confusing. Like, just call it Kilcarran. It's got the brand recognition now. But anyway, <laughs> that's just a side note. Springbank own Glengyle, but Kilcarran's often seen as the Springbank that you actually can find, that you can buy, that you can afford. I found this one, Kilcarran 16. Good whiskey. The only exception with Kilcarran, I would say, is the Kilcarran 8. This is an elusive whiskey. And the pricing, like Springbank, is just up and down. Like if you get lucky, you can get it at a good price. It's always on my list. I'm really keen to buy it. People going on about this whiskey. So that's what I'm hunting. I'm hunting this whiskey because I'm buying a lot of it. Every expression I'm like, ooh, should I try that? Should I try that? And it's one I didn't even used to buy. It is getting to the point in New Zealand when it does come here, like it's hard, it, it goes quick. It sells out. Um, I really loved my first bottle. And what is that? Well, I'm talking about the Ben Romick Cast Strength. I really like this whiskey. So what's so special about it? Well, first of all, it's from Speyside. And to be honest, I'm not picking up a lot of Speyside whiskeys these days. There's a lot of distilleries there, but there's also a lot of mediocre whiskeys. Ben Romick's kind of an exception to that. I think Craig Gallick is an exception to that. Tamdu is probably an exception to that. It's because of its spirit style. It's got a really like rugged, meaty, mustardy notes that normally you associate with 
Campbell Town whiskies like Springbanks. And we did say in my recent video with G Whiskey that the Ben Romick is a great alternative to Springbank. It does seem like now these days people are catching on and when it does arrive, they are selling out quick. So I think next time I'll probably buy a couple of bottles. So this next whiskey was nominated for the best Scotch whiskey of 2023 in the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. But also a lot of other whiskey YouTubers last year gave this their whiskey of the year. And I haven't tried it yet and I haven't bought it yet. Um, it's a smoky whiskey, but it's not from Isla. It's like kind of been a disruption, especially among peat heads at the moment, because it's the one that everybody's loving. It's not from Isla and it is the Le Chag. And specifically the one I'm hunting is the Le Chag 18. So I've talked a lot about the Le Chag 10. If you're into smoky, it's fantastic. And I can get hold of this, so it's not on my hunted list because I've already hunted it, I've found it. So for those who don't know, Tobermory has two branches. So Tobermory has the Tobermory, which is an unpeated whiskey, and they also have the Le Chag, which is the peated whiskey. But most whiskey enthusiasts seem to be giving a lot more hype towards the Le Chag. 18 just seems to be the pinnacle. A lot of people are seeking it out at the moment. And the one thing I would say is that the value seems to hold strong, especially among 18 year old whiskies at the moment. I think that's a big theme of 2023 for me. It's the year where I've kind of gone off high age statement whiskies. I do think there's diminishing returns beyond an 18 year old. However, even 18 year old whiskey is kind of going out of reach for me, Talisker 18, McAllen 18, like these are whiskies that are just becoming so expensive. So I'm not picking them up anymore, but whiskies like the Lechag 18, the Anok 18, they're ones that are still on my radar. Just before we get into the number one whiskey, I wanna tell you about two very important things. One is if you haven't joined the whiskey community, especially um, over Christmas, I'll be taking a little bit of a break, but if you still wanna interact with me or other whiskey enthusiasts or whatever she or whiskeys you're having, go join the Discord. Um, it's free, doesn't cost anything. The other thing is uh, if you do wanna support the channel, uh, jump over to Patreon as well. And it really helps me like spit up more content. I'm, I'm really trying to test if whether this channel is feasible, it's getting to the point where I'm I'm not so sure, so Patreon really is the thing that's keeping this channel alive. Um, jump over there too. Oh, Christmas is coming up. Jump over to my Etsy store if you want some whiskey themed t-shirts. We've got Pete Smoke, we've also got Peter the Whale from the logo. First of all t-shirts. Jump over there if you want one of those, but uh, yeah, back to the video. So the number one whiskey that I am hunting that I really want to find, pretty much since I got into whiskey, I've always owned a bottle from this distillery. It also was nominated for the best Scotch whiskey in the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. It's from Isla, but it's not peated. It's Sherry Cask Forward, and it is the Burner Haven 12. But this is not the one I'm hunting. I'm hunting the cast strength. So people gone nuts over the cast strength uh, version recently. Unchill filtered, natural color, but it's not just about stats, the liquid is great too. And I've also got like a sentimental attachment to Bernhaven. I was in Iceland and watching the Northern Lights and this is the dram I had. And so it's always a special whiskey to me. And knowing that there's a whiskey out there that's cast drink, that's turned up, is meant that it's really on my radar. Someone actually sent me a dram. Uh, this was sent to me by Dave Swift. I'm gonna try it a little bit now. Yeah, that's turned up. It's just classic Bernhaven, dried fruit, nutty, spice. But it's got that nice kind of like coastal background. I've, and I've actually done a full review of the Bernhaven 12 if you want to watch that. Really nice stuff. At the moment, because it's kind of hard to get hold of a Bernhaven cast drink, there is actually a lot of independent bottlings who buy casks directly from Bernhaven and release it under their own strength. So this one is from Signatory. It's 68.2%, so an absolute bomb. It's aged 11 years, and it's from a first fill sherry butt, so also very sherry forward. So if you can't find the official release, do look up for independent bottlings. But I'm keen to hear from you. Which whiskies are you hunting? Which whiskies do you want to be gifted, maybe for Christmas? Or which whiskies are very high on your wish list? Leave a comment down below. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy. Beauty. Beauty.